Hey my friends, this is Freddy. I'm a resident in infectious diseases and today I'm answering your coronavirus questions. So let's go. Let's start off right away with two of the biggest questions lately. Where does the virus come from and why does it affect humans as badly as it does? Well, the first question has already been answered extensively by news media, social media and scientists who are basically saying that the virus originated from a market in southern China in the Wuhan province where people sell lots of wild animals in very confined spaces in very non-hygienic conditions. Basically making it easy for a virus to jump from an intermediate host, let's say a wild animal, to the next host, the human being. But if you listen closely to the current discussion, you hear the word intermediate hosts a lot. Because scientists are trying to figure out from which animal exactly the virus jumped over to the human being. But saying intermediate host implies that there's got to be some kind of primary host or super host where the virus actually came from originally. And the role of the primary host in this current pandemic is taken by an old suspect that has been implicated in many epidemics and pandemics before. And we're talking bats. Bats have been the primary host for many viral diseases that have caused lots of damage in humanity during the last 30 years. Like 2003, the SARS epidemic, caused by a virus that came from a bat. 2012, MERS virus, originally came from a bat. 2014, Ebola, came from a bat. And last but not least, the rabies virus, which is still causing lots of problems until today. So why do viruses apparently prefer bats as their primary hosts for reproduction? Well, for once, bats are the only mammal on this planet that can fly. And they behave a lot like birds. For example, every year, thousands of bats migrate from the southern United States to Mexico and back again. And every time a small passenger, the virus, gets a free seat on an airplane bat, and has the opportunity to explore a huge range and a huge number of new hosts everywhere it goes. The second reason is that bats tend to migrate and live in huge groups, making interspecies transmission even easier. But one of the most important reasons is that bats are one of the oldest living mammals. They actually started to show up only a few million years after the dinosaurs disappeared. And as soon as bats started to conquer the world, viruses discovered bats as a potential new host. So what happened was the beginning of a 50 million year long enduring battle between the virus who started and tried to get inside the bat and the bat itself who tried to put up a defense or a defensive strategy to keep the virus out. The result of this evolutionary battle is a ceasefire agreement between the two parties. Because scientists have found out that bats can have many different viruses in their bodies, but not showing any symptoms or becoming sick. And this is the perfect host for a virus, because a virus is not a killer. A virus doesn't want to kill its host, because if the host dies, the virus has to look for a different host and has to jump, and that costs lots of energy. But if the host, in this case the bat, allows the virus to do its thing, and at the same time that doesn't affect the bat itself and it stays healthy, both parties are happy and it's a perfect ceasefire agreement. And this leads to the answer of the second question, which was why the coronavirus causes so much trouble in the human body. Well, humans haven't been around for 50 million years. They started to show up about 200,000 years ago. So the immune system lacks experience with its enemy. So the moment the virus comes into the respiratory systems of, let's say, an older person or a person with conditions, the immune system unleashes a whole army or even atomic bombs to kill the virus-infected cells. A part of the army that tries to defend the body against the virus are free radicals. And they are very efficient in killing virus-infected cells. But at the same time, they are very unspecific. And sometimes, with older people or people with conditions, they cause so much side damage that the body actually dies. So the reason why people die of COVID-19 is an overreaction by the immune system against an unknown enemy. And this implies that bats, for example, they have a way of regulating their immune system when an enemy shows up. 
Scientists are still trying to uncover the secret of how bats can regulate their immune response in such an efficient way. But for now they have found out about two major reasons. The first one is tied to the fact that bats have a very high metabolic rate. And what does it mean, high metabolic rate? Well, bats fly a lot and their body temperature rises from 37 degrees when not flying to 41 degrees when flying. Basically meaning that lots of food is turned into energy. And this process has as a side effect the release of free radicals. The free radicals in this case are not produced by an immune system in order to kill virus infected cells, but are a side product that is released while having a high metabolic rate. So somehow the bat has a system to remove these free radicals, which otherwise would kill its own cells. And how this works, scientists don't really know. But they are suspecting different proteins that can basically inactivate the free radicals. The second way a bat's immune system can stop a viral infection is a biochemical molecule called interferon alpha. So the moment a virus enters one of the cells, the interferon alpha signals to the other cells that there is a danger coming and the cells put themselves in a lockdown so the virus can't come inside. So I think it's important to notice that we already have an animal out there whose immune system knows how to tackle the coronavirus. So let's put more effort in on finding out how it does it and maybe that way the animal that gave us the virus in the first place can actually contribute to find a solution to this world pandemic. This is Freddy, I hope you enjoyed it, hit like, hit subscribe, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.